Hello and welcome to the SWBN News Watch, where we report global events from a Christian perspective. I am Chimela Chiki. Thanks for joining us today. Now let's take a look at some of the stories that caught our attention. Stories you need to hear about. In the latest turn of events, the World Health Organization has issued a warning about a Marburg virus that has killed two persons in Ghana at the time of this report. Ghana announced the country's first outbreak of Marburg vi virus disease after a WHO collaborating center laboratory confirmed earlier results. Quoting the WHO report, the Institute Pasteur in Dhaka, Senegal, received samples from each of the two patients from the southern Shanti region of Ghana, both deceased and unrelated, who showed symptoms including diarrhea, fever, nausea, and vomiting. More than 90 contacts, including health workers and community members, have been identified and are being monitored. Mabag is a highly infectious viral hemorrhagic fever in the same family as the more well-known Ebola virus disease. It is only the second time the zoonotic disease has been detected in West Africa. Guinea confirmed a single case in an outbreak that was declared over on the 16th of September 2021, five weeks after the initial case was detected. There are no vaccines for the Marburg virus. Moreover, concerns are also rising over Tanzania's unnamed disease revealed to be leptospirosis. Health authorities in Tanzania say the disease usually spreads in tropical areas. At the time of this report, BBC Africa has it that WHO is also investigating in the illness. Confirmation results from its uh, reference lab in Senegal will determine any additional response. Symptoms of uh, leptospirosis include fever, headaches, fatigue, and nosebleeds. 13 cases have been reported in southeast Tanzania, including three people who have died. Still on the health uh, beat, more especially on the COVID-19 vaccine, Dr. Peter Makulo has fallen out. Who has fallen out with mainstream media over his alleged controversial stance on the COVID-19 pandemic, its origin and the vaccines testified before the Texas Senate Committee on Health and Human Services, where he raised concerns over the COVID-19 vaccines and the accompanying deaths. Watch. The World Council for Health which represents 70 bodies worldwide, has called for a global recall of all vaccines because worldwide, 40,000 deaths that the safety databases across the world, 40,000 in the big ones, VAERS, the yellow card system, the Vigisafe, and the UGIS system, 40,000 deaths with the vaccines, unacceptably high. Typical standard for any biologic product is 50 deaths, pull it off the market, something's gone wrong. 50, not 40,000. So when there is a global recall by an international organization, this committee ought to be having emergency meetings. What are we going to do? A worldwide body has called for these to pull off the market. They're still giving it. You just heard from the pharmacy director ahead of me. He's still giving them out. When there's a worldwide call, a call recall, there should be some committee meeting so you have it down. I mean, you can tell something is going wrong here that we're in trouble in terms of vaccine safety. Dr. Malone has covered vaccine efficacy, which has largely waned. I will just tell you that the CDC told us as of December 10th, 2021, with the Omicron strain, 79% of people with Omicron were fully vaccinated. That is prima facie evidence that the vaccines have completely failed against <coughs> Omicron. Alternative viewpoints on the COVID-19 pandemic are still being censored by the mainstream media. However, you are advised to follow your CDC regulations as you deem fit and appropriate. In the face of this present darkness in our world today, remember what the scripture encourages us to do in Psalm 91, especially in verses 5 and 6, where it charges us not to be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. God is for us and not against us. He will hide us and preserve us. Amen. 
moving on in Nigeria, the Redeemed Christian Church of God has said the General Vasia Pastor Enoch Adeboye would not be endorsing any candidate for the 2023 elections. The church made this known in a statement on its official Twitter page. RCCG also refuted claims that Adeboye met with the All Progressive Congress uh, con presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The statement reads partly, and I quote, it has come to a notice that some news outlets are reporting that a meeting between Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, worldwide, and the former Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Bola Ahmed Tinubu, was held a few days back at the Redemption Camp, where our esteemed Father in the Lord was said to have supported the preferred candidature of the party the former Governor is a member of. Pastor E.A. Adeboye and RCCG have not and will not endorse any candidature any candidate, rather, for the 2023 general elections in Nigeria, end of quote. This is coming at a time when serious concerns are rising over the APC's Muslim-Muslim ticket that saw the emergence of former governor of Borno State, Kashim Shatima, as the running mate of the presidential flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Meanwhile, Sahara reporters has it that Tinubu's camp allegedly hired unknown bishops to Shatima's unveiling ceremony. This is happening after media reports from religious bodies urge Christian leaders to boycott the unveiling to drive home the point of their grievances. Special Assistant of Media and Communications to the Christian Association of Nigeria's President, Pastor Adeboye, Pastor Adebayo Oladiji had a few weeks ago condemned the APC's Muslim-Muslim uh, Muslim ticket, saying that the situation in the country was not suitable for a Muslim-Muslim Muslim ticket. In a related development, General Secretary to Khan, Reverend Joseph Badidaramola, in a statement also considered the choice of Shatima as a declaration of war. Still in Nigeria, the Cardinal State Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria has described the gruesome murder of Reverend Father John Mark Chetnam by terrorists as dangerous terrain for Christian leaders. Earlier media report had it that Father John Mark was abducted from the rectory of Christ the King Parish, Yadengaru, Lere local government area of Cardinal State, and was brutally killed by his abductors on the same day of his abduction. His decomposing body was found four days after. The current state chairman in Kaduna, Reverend John Joseph Hayab, expressed sadness over Chetnam's murder, who until his death was the current chairman of Jemma, local government area of the state, as well as coordinator of Khan in southern Kaduna. Meanwhile, Reverend Father Donatus Claire Pass, who was also kidnapped by the terrorists, escaped from the abductors. At the time of this report, the diocese had, however, declared a two-day mourning for the peaceful repose of his soul. Over to Ukraine, CBN News has it that millions of Ukrainians have had to flee and become refugees, but parts of Ukraine are still somewhat peaceful. In this area, CBN's orphans promise is on the scene to provide refugee shelters for those who have fled from the raging violence elsewhere. Watch. So we're in Medica, Poland today at the border um, with Ukraine and Poland where uh, thousands of refugees are still coming here every day. Um, it's the evening and the crowd um, is lesser, but um, there are still many people and many of them have no idea where they are going. I've talked today to a mom of a five-year-old um, and um, she was sharing how um, they had to flee. Uh, they've been holding off. They, they lived on the outskirts of Kharkov and they've been holding off until um, the last moment, until they've started hearing the bombs explode in the neighbor's houses and um, their kitchen windows started cracking and breaking. And she was just saying it was too hard to explain it to my five year old that it's all just a game, that it's all, uh, you know, trying to make it light for him. Um, but uh, she left. Um, uh, her parents behind who didn't want to leave. She left um, a lot of relatives. Uh, her uh, two of her brother's families are there because her brothers are in the military and family couldn't leave. And so she said um, with tears in her eyes how they are starting their days with, um, hi, is it quiet there? She said the new greeting started being, is it quiet or have you had bombing? While the ministry is providing humanitarian aid, it's also providing spiritual hope. 
Avans promised worker Olga told CBN News that, quote, we cannot save everyone, but the most important part of our job is to share good news. We are trying to share the good news in this time because people are open to accepting Jesus. And we have so many people who have accepted Jesus in this time. The fighting spirit is alive and well here in Ukraine as people continue to hope and pray that this war will soon end. Meanwhile, Russia's President Vladimir Putin visited Tehran where he sought to strengthen support networks within the Middle East. According to the Associated Press, Putin won staunch support from Iran over his country's military campaign in Ukraine, with Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei saying that the West opposes an independent and strong Russia. Putin's visit happened days after U.S. President Joe Biden visited Israel and Saudi Arabia, Tehran's primary rivals. From Jerusalem and Jeddah, Biden, according to the Associated Press, urged Israel and Arab countries to push back on Russian, Chinese, and Iranian influence that has expanded with the perception of America's retreat from the Middle East. Still talking about wars and rumors of war, the city of New York recently released a video instructing residents via YouTube on what they should do in the event of a nuclear attack. The short public service announcement produced by the New York City Emergency Management Department said that while the likelihood of a nuclear weapon incident occurring in or near New York City is very low, they want New Yorkers to have a plan. On a lighter note, videos of this precious little kid singing about the goodness of God have been circulating on social media. Even Bethel Music shared it on their Instagram reel and it has garnered 2.9 million views at the time of this report. Let's watch. So we did a little research and we found out that these kids are part of the Yahweh Children Ministries, an NGO that serves as a home of hope, bringing healing to kids and empowering them. The NGO was founded by David Mobiru, also known as Dad for All Kids. We dug a bit deeper into YahwehChildrenMinistries.org where we got information that David knows what it means to lose one's family and to live on the streets, spending each day searching for something to eat and a place to lay one's head. He has taken these children off the streets and is providing and is caring for them, providing food, clothing, shelter and education with support through donations. The Yahweh Children Ministries is located in Uganda. Uganda is a religiously diverse nation with Christianity being the most widely professed faith. Despite this, Christians are still being persecuted by Muslim minorities. And that will be all for this edition of the SWVN News Watch. Thank you so much for staying with us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till we meet next Thursday, 9 p.m., I remain Chimalachike. God bless you.